Thanks for tuning in to your day off podcast, hosted by your boys, Corey and Tony. I think by the end of today, I might have another best friend. They're committed to making you fall in love with the hair industry, one podcast at a time. Uh, you're going to grab a lot of information. Yeah, you're going to learn a lot. Presented by Hair Industry. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. Your day off podcast will begin after a word from our sponsors. Corey and I am at Premier Orlando. First and first and foremost, thank you, Premier Orlando, for bringing us out once again. Um, this is one of the finest hair shows in the country. And if you're listening in and you're not going to hair shows, shame on you. You should be here. Um, the energy is amazing. Uh, it, 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 between ABS and between Premier this year, like the hair shows are back, man. The energy's back. It, it feels so good to be on the floors. It's like the community, you know what it is? It's the community that's back, you know, and the community's back at the hair shows. And I, I encourage everyone to come in and hang out and, and, and um, you know, get some classes in because hands-on classes are fire, fire, fire right now as well. But hey, so um, I've mentioned this a couple of times on the podcast before. Tony couldn't be here with us this weekend. Apparently he wanted to be in Iceland instead of being at Premier Orlando. So he gets a little bit of an excuse or he gets a little bit of a pass, I should say. But sitting in so what we decided to do is we decided to do um, some roundtable conversation. So we bring in our friends and we're just going to kind of chop it up this weekend. And um, this is our last podcast uh, uh, for the weekend. Um, and all of them have been really, really good um, as far as the roundtable uh, format. So I'm excited about that. So once again, uh, my good friend Robbie Lawrence is sitting in with us. He has the Hairdresser Strong Show podcast and the Hairdresser Strong Show on Instagram. Definitely, definitely give him a follow. Robbie, what's up, buddy? What's up, man? I'm so happy to be here. We're, I'm so happy to have you. Thank you so much for filling in for uh, for Tony's big, big shoes. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think that I'm filling any shoes, but I think I'm uh, just, you know, trying to be supportive and get the chance to talk to great artists and stuff. So I'm really excited. That's awesome. Um, how was the show for you? I had a, I mean, this has been very inspiring. Like I kind of came here wondering if I was going to get some answers to some questions about my future. And I think I got, I, I got them for sure. So I'm really, I've it, just inspiration, motivation, you know, talking to networking and learning. And uh, so I feel like ready for like the next leg of my journey. So um, it was Big, big for me this year. So last year you came as media, and this year you came as media. What's been the difference between the um, the last two years? Uh, well, the first time I came, I was like a fish out of water kind of, and I was also like we were just, we we it was like our first show, and uh, we we're like uh, deer in headlights, and and um, this year I felt like I really understood that, um, like I knew more people and. Um, I knew how to like, w w work around the room and like, it's okay to, some things are okay to not, you know, trade off of, for what you're going to be able to see. Cause you can't see everything. Right. And, um, but I would have to say that it's like, I, something clicked. It's like, you know, in the movie, the matrix, when Neo gets shot and he falls down and then he gets back up, he comes back to life, but he could see the matrix code. It's almost like he can see how the world works and now, and, and I, I just had like an aha moment. Uh, and I think that's really what helped me, like, kind of for my own journey, you know, so that's, that's pretty, my biggest difference. Th that's pretty cool. It, it, yeah, I, I totally get that. I remember the first year that we were here, 2018, we were just kind of like, that's media, right? We were here 2018, and just how overwhelming it was, how, how big and how big the lights were and everything. And then, you know, every time that you do it, like, the the energy and the pressure, like, the, it calms down a little bit and, and you know, um, Hanging, hanging out with people's a little more relaxed. Yeah, you know? yeah, for sure. You know, so yeah. Yeah, actually, last night I got to, um, I went to the pool with Maddie Conrad, and like where Maddie, Maddie's always been a really good friend, um, but you know, it's only been the last couple of years where like that that guy that you see, that that incredible artist that you see, um, um, on the uh, on the stage and on the instas, you know, like now he's just a bud that we hang out at the pool with, you know, which is which is really cool, and like it, it's kind of a cool. It, cool transition as well and to be able to actually uh, that it's palpable and that i can see it and feel it and like or not feel it as the as the case might be so listen today on the podcast we have somebody that we've been trying to get on the podcast for a couple years but today it's going to happen we say that a lot but today it's going to happen so our guest today is joel torres and uh joel we're gonna uh you know ask joel what he's up to and how his weekend went um but uh we'll get into that um mr joel torres welcome to your day off 
Yeah, finally we did it, right? We, we did it, man. All those we 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 exchanged about a thousand DMs to make it happen, but it make it happen. Yeah, I was like checking our conversation the other day. I was like, I feel bad because I never got because you drop the ball every time, Joel. <laughs> <laughs> you know what happened on Instagram? Then you receive like uh, I don't know, like twenty five messages, and yeah. then it disappear. Yeah. And yeah, be, yeah. Because if you if I know that because like like if I get a text, I have a bunch of them right now. If I get a text message that I can't respond to, I don't respond to them until I have the time to you know to to take care of it. But on Instagram, if you do that, once they get out of like your front yeah. scroll, they're gone. Yeah. You know, and then you don't have the notification that you have unread messages. Exactly. So yeah, I don't find uh, Instagram DM particularly uh, that good for conducting a business. I know they're adding lots and lots of features and getting better, but I I, I don't. I, I really don't like the the user usability of the messaging portion of Instagram personally. Yeah. Oh, here we are. But here we are. Thank yep. you for the opportunity. I appreciate it. I, absolutely, man. I'm glad. I'm glad that uh, you could make time to uh, to do it this morning. And Monday mornings are tough for the hair show. We were just talking about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I decided to go to my room, be a good boy, so then I can be responsible. And here I am. Be here right on time. Yeah. I was a little late, so maybe I was a little bit less responsible. I was responsible <laughs> last night because I just went to the pool with Maddie instead of, like, you know, going out. But uh, I wasn't feeling so hot last night. Um, if you listen to the podcast that we did with Jacob Kahn, you, uh, you know why I wasn't feeling so good last night. So I didn't want to be that far away from my hotel room. <laughs> 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 oh man Thank, uh, yeah it's crazy so joel uh wh where are you from so my name is joel i have an accent and that's because i am born and raised in puerto rico oh nice i've been living in the state for the last 12 years 13 years yeah oh so you, so you're kind of new to the u.s it wasn't like you came over yes as a kid. yes yes and i i first did this show in 2004 so by that time I was working or trying to make my way under the Tony and Guy uh, umbrella. Mm -hmm. So I have my first opportunity to be on the stage, not on the stage, on the sales booth. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I worked three years before I got into the stage. That was my training. My English was bad. So they put me, just sell. It's just Orlando. Everybody speaks Spanish, so you can be you know, super helpful helping with translation and it's like a translation wow i only know spanish <laughs> <laughs> i can translate to spanish to spanish <laughs> but i was you know numbers and hey this 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 so that was like my first year and then every year i you know i was practicing more and more and more and more and today my english is better still have the accent but you can't hear it at all joel <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing there man <laughs> that's all. how'd you find the hair industry i used to do hair like since i was like super young you know, my first haircut, I was 12, my cousin. I didn't finish the haircut, by the way. Um, I only have, like, one clipper and no attachment. So that was bald all the way mm. to the sides. I was, like, late 80s. Um, but then practicing, you know, every week, I was getting better and better and better. I was going to the barber shop and then listen, not listen, watch the barber uh, just cutting hair. And then every time we got a new client, I was like, J just go first. And I was just sitting in the barbershop just watching him and then going to my house and try to replicate. Right? There was no school at that time, at that age. Right. right. So I was just, you know, watching the barber doing his thing. And a funny thing is that, you know, I, then they, he gave me a couple of attachments. So they gave me two number two <laughs> attachments. <laughs> I said, like, well, I need one number one. <laughs> <laughs> so I took that number two. I went to the sidewalk. And I make a no, I did made, you? I made my own number one. Nice. It was sharp. <laughs> <laughs> it was sharp. <laughs> I was crushing everybody's skin. <laughs> but then I started charging one dollar, two dollar, and then I bought my first number one, and then yeah, Whoa. That, that's how I started. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, and you know some of the first clients that I have in my house because they were in the same neighborhood. It was Daddy Yankee. Daddy oh really? Yankee, yeah. La Gasolina. He's famous for La Gasolina and Despacito. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. He was one of my first one. I think I was like 18, 17 when I cut his hair the first time in my garage. Does he still have the scar on his head from that number one? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's Probably. really cool. Yeah, so, yeah, it was cool. You know, but, you know, in the Caribbean, everything is short, like, it's fade. So it was uh, super nice for me. You know, having like that many clients or so practicing in my garage, in my garage. But I wanted to be an architect. So I decided to, you know, on, I'm not going to cut hair. I'm going to the architecture school. 
and I went there for like a year, maybe mm -hmm. year and a half, but I was lost. I was like, mm, this is not for mom. Can I just change career? Can I go to the barber school and see, you know, if I can, you know, do this uh, at least until I find what I love. Right. Like I was trying to push that, even though that I have the, the skills, right. From right. my grandfather, he was barber. So yeah, I continue with that and, and yeah, I went to three different schools that were, they closed the first one. Um, almost I'm finishing, they closed it. I went to another one and then they didn't let me finish. I had something with the, um, you know, like they have like the Bell Grant. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, some financial aids and all that stuff. So it didn't work with the second one. So after wasting my time for three years almost, I took a break and I decided to go back to school. And the third one I finished barbering and then I went all the way to cosmetology and I did it. After I finished and I got my uh, diploma, they closed that school. So I was super close to mm. lose my time oh. again. It would be like five years. Holy oh cow. I gosh. don't know how I did it. You know, I was like, something was pushing me into just go back. You know, there's something in I the don't, di this industry for you. I didn't, I, even with like, and there's so many barbers, I'm not throwing shade, let me be clear, but there's so many barbers that are working without a license and, and like that's not even important to a lot of barbers. I'm surprised that you even had the, gumption to finish it like yeah. you're like i can cut hair i mean who's going to keep me from cutting hair that's what i want to yeah. do right why do i need this license to validate that i'm by the way let me be clear i'm not in favor of like not licensing <laughs> that's not what yeah. i'm saying but being in that situation being that it seems like the industry is it, uh, it keeps taking shots at you right and you couldn't finish school that that you would even like decide to that it was that important you know what i'm saying as opposed yeah. to just cutting hair yeah i took my test and i did all my you know all the things that i have to do for my license and i got you know the both license mm -hmm. um, and that's like like a second chance in my career to you know finish so did, I'm when still you here so when you finished school did you uh, go to a barbershop or a hair salon or I started in a barbershop yes uh -huh. I started in a barbershop and then I was uh, a student as a student because I was d barbering I was working in the barbershop but then I was in cosmetology school by night mm -hmm. so I was like finishing the entire day hair 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 um, and then I was a competitor for the school. So we went to New York twice, 99 and 2000, 98 and 99, I think, IBS. Mm -hmm. um, the, fir the first time I went there, I placed like fifth out of 30 people. But I said like, mm, I want to come back and see if I can do better, take right. it seriously. So I went back to Puerto Rico. I started practicing almost every day for a year. And then I went back and they said, well, you can, pr you can compete in men's and women's. Mm. And then you can get the New York Cup. I said, like, overall. And I said, well, that's a challenge. Maybe I can do this. Okay. Mm. Let me practice. So I started. I hold, on, hold on. What were you practicing when you went home? With the mannequin. Right. And then and like, for like men's. Like just haircuts and stuff like that? Haircut and style. Mannequin, like uh, the commercial, which is not commercial at all, but that was the name. Yep. And then in women's, it was just styling. So for my surprise. I play second on men's, but I place first in women's. Nice. What? So I said, like, there's something here. <coughs> By the way, I have to decide this because I, it still hurts. So they, my last name was uh, spelled wrong. Ooh. So they kind of like two different people. So they didn't give me the cup of New York there. They, they gave it to someone else. Mm. It didn't make sense. And I was trying to fight, but I, my English wasn't good. So to fight it. Um, so the director of the school said, no, no, don't, don't worry. Like, let's just go home and figure it out. But nobody supported me. So I have a client who speaks English and she helped me send a fax <laughs> to IBS. And they say, oh, we found the mistake. You won the cup of New York. We're going to send it home. And I said, yeah, but I wanted to be in the podium with my flag. Right. right? Sure. So that was us, like unfinished business. And that still hurts today. You have no idea. That's crazy. But it's also one of my greatest motivators, right? Mm. So I use that fuel to, you know, okay, it's still Herbert's. Let's, let's, there's some work that I have to do to work more. Right? So if we were to take you there and we were to put you up there with your flag and stuff, well, we'd have to like put like a, a younger AI filter on you. So you, yeah. you so you're that with young AI, boy. I can do it. You can yeah. do it. Do it. <laughs> I don't know what is that trophy though. My mom, I think that she throw it away. Oh, oh no. Mom. Yeah. That hurts too. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of throwing shade. <laughs> Crazy. But yeah, that, that's how I started in the women's industry. And then I, I left the barbershop 
and fighting with my coworker. And I just, you know, took all my stuff. And then I was like, I'm going to start, you know, working in a salon. So I quit all my clients. And then I was a shampoo boy in a salon, a really nice salon. I have to go with a tie, like super dressy. Right. It was super fine. So I learned a lot of uh, discipline, you know, a lot of stuff in that salon. And that's how I started in the women's so, industry. So you started over again, like after all, like the school stuff. And then like, you're like, I'm yeah. leaving the barber and I'm, wow. I identify at some point because... You know, he spent a couple of years uh, in school, in, in between schools and stuff. So probably like I was 20-something, and I went to, you know, this uh, salon, and I noticed something. It's like, well, just get a good mentor, learn from them, and then you see big difference in your career. So I was making sure that I was mentoring the best in Puerto Rico. I think I did. Mm -hmm. I think I did some of the best, like top 10 hairdressers. Um and that's how I got my my discipline and you know, and and all that. And I some of the people that I I still remember one person specifically that she, he was working all the time, cutting and the the body position. It was just like uh, classical music, mm. and I said this dude, right? And I said like, where's your education? Like, you know, where do you went to school? And he said like, but it, Tony and guy in, in Sassoon. And then he said, I have something for you, Joel. So he gave me BHS collection of Tony and Guy. And I went to my house and I was watching that every single day. I was like, damn, this is amazing. Can I curse? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. No, no, don't so, apologize. Okay. You did okay, it already. Cool. <laughs> damn. <laughs> <laughs> so I saw that. I was like, yeah, this is music to my ears. So I started my, my journey, like, you know, studying at home until I found um, education for, you know, Tony and Guy in Puerto Rico. And I was just, man, I want to take these classes, but I don't have any money. So maybe I can offer, hey, can I s stay in the room and clean the room after the class mm. just to do a trade? And that's how I started. I literally cleaning the floors that for, like, for them. That's like, I think there's a lesson there. Uh, yes. Yeah. You know, like, I think there's a lesson there. I think, one, I think it's, I think that's the way in the room. Because I think if somebody's willing to come and clean up and to do whatever that needs to be done, like, if you're a brand or if you're a whatever, take that person. Yeah. Because that person's fired up. But the person that's looking to, like, slide in or whatever, like, I don't necessarily know if they've got that drive. And I, I shared this story with other people. Like, if I'm doing a class and I see a lot of young, young hairdressers and they ask me, what is the way? I was like, are you really want to do the way that I learn? Because new generations are different, right? They they want it now, right? So I said, this is how I did it. And it works. Mm -hmm. If you want to find like a faster way or whatever, maybe social media can help you. But, um, and you can get there, but the discipline and the principles and, you know, very responsible. Yeah, you have to start from the bottom. Because mm -hmm. right? then you can appreciate more. You're more thankful. I think that's fair. Yeah, I think I'm in a in a good position that I know my old, like the real OGs and the mentors that I have, and then the new generation. So I'm in the middle. So I know a little bit of one thing, mm -hmm. and also I know a little bit of the social media aspect of the business. Um, and I feel great. And I try to be like a connection between both um, eras. Right, right. Maybe one person from 100 is going to listen, and I'm fine with it. I mean, that's, that's what it is, right? Yeah. You know, reach who you can. Yeah. You know, don't reach everyone. Reach who you can, you know? Like, you brought up classical music, and, and um, this morning um, I was, uh, like, scrolling your page, and you do so much of your cuts to classical music, and I go, that's cool. So when I'm backstage and I have to do a haircut and I know that I need concentration and the room is really loud, I need to have my headphones and I'm playing classical music. What, so what's the connection to classical music? I don't know. It just make me concentrate a lot more on what I'm doing. Uh, it made me isolate from the madness outside. It's like, hey, hey, people screaming and saying a lot of stuff like my classical music, and I'm there cutting. There's uh, study research that shows that classical music kind of opens up certain pathways in the brain to enable um, focus and ed learning and stuff like that. I do the same thing when I'm working in a cafe on a computer or something. Yes. I just put my headphones on. I, I listen to classical unless it's really loud. I might put on some opera or something, yeah. something a little bit louder. But, uh, yeah. You know, my yeah. favorite thing to do was when I um, uh, to go onto, like, country back roads and put on opera. 
And then, and then it, it, I feel like I'm in a movie script. Yeah, and it I'm sounds like, like a movie. Yes. You know, but it totally works. <laughs> yeah. Like, do it, like, just like, and like, you want it loud. Like, you don't, you don't want to hear the road noise. You just want to hear the music. And then, you know, as you're zipping through on back, on back roads, it's, it's really, really cool. When I travel, one of the things that I like to do when I travel, I put my headphones, I walk the cities, and I like to take architecture because I still have a strong passion for architecture. And I use it for here. Mm-hmm. How you build foundation and structure. Well, you've and got that. good company because you know that's exactly how Vidal Sassoon got started. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. So, so I found a connection one with the other one, and I use it for my work. Um, but when I'm traveling, I put my headphones and I go in the cities and I take pictures of the buildings, the corners, and I make a story, black and white, everything of my journey that morning in the city while mm-hmm. I go to a coffee shop, and I, I just go crazy taking pictures with classical music. It's, it's contemporary classic. It's not like Beethoven. No, okay. it's uh, like a combination of new and old. Okay. And mm-hmm. I like it a lot. Nice. And, and sometimes I ask the model, can you guess what I'm listening to? And they think that I'm watching, I listening to Rob Zombie. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, nope. <laughs> this is what I'm listening to. Like, oh, I didn't expect Ooh. that. But then it's like so calming. It's so calming. Yeah. Because it doesn't matter how many years you've been in the industry, you get chills. You get the, the, the butterflies, right? So... It's something big is going to happen. You're going on stage or there's a presentation. You're responsible for the presentation. So I just want something to ease my mind. That's nice. it. Do you have a Spotify uh, 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 playlist that you can share with our listeners? I can create one. I think it's a good idea. I think it's, yeah. good, a, really good I think it's a really good idea. Yeah. You certainly will get me as a as a yeah, I'll as a follower. Yeah, yeah. me too. Awesome. I would just be interested to see like what's Joel listening yeah. to. You I know might know use I mean? that for when I'm uh, working on working on stuff too. Yeah, and in the salon, you know, the, depends on the vibe and the day. I change my music, but I start with some, some morning bossa nova. You know, there's a lot of uh, covers band that they play uh, bossa and roses, bossa and stones, like Rolling Stones, but mm. bossa nova. Whoa, really? Oh, that's cool. Bossa and Marley, Bob Marley, <laughs> but on Bossa Nova. So I, I start my morning with that, and it's incredible, like chill. And then I go into lo-fi, beats, stuff like that. I so wish we had Wi-Fi right now because I would pull yeah. it up, you yeah, know? Me too. Whoa, that's so cool. Yeah, that's super really, cool. That's really cool. That music, like, you know how it's music, so I have to play my music in my studio and, and do my class. I used to do this. I used to work in a salon working at, from seven to four, but from seven to nine, I was by myself. So I will tell that client, if you book the first appointment or the second one, uh, bring your playlist and I'll play for you. Mm. Nice. It was a good idea until I found a couple of clients doesn't have the taste. <laughs> 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 and then I was like, oh my gosh, I need to you know, finish this client. <laughs> I don't like the music. <laughs> Crazy. He, he's judging people by their music. So yeah. like, after he, after he offers it to him, like no no this sucks. Show me your playlist and I know who you are. <laughs> you know that, Show me your playlist, I know who you are. That makes me think that of, might be the title of the podcast. Yes. Show me your music <laughs> and I know who you are. Oh man, we had a situation like that in the salon recently where um, the front desk person was playing some sort of like I don't know, it was like screaming sound. I don't know. I know there's it, I don't whatever genre that is like heavy metal or something yep. like I don't know. Um, but they were literally rah, 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 rah. and uh, we didn't really notice it until it changed. The song changed, and everyone looked around. I'm like, "Oh my gosh!" I just feel, realized I was under some pressure and some some intense like uh, stress. We did we had tuned it out, but we hadn't realized that we were actually being impacted by it. Yeah, yeah, music's so important. Yeah, when you get a tattoo, like they don't listen to classical music, right? They're no. hardcore, right? Yeah. They're mad. Yeah, 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 getting all deep. Yeah. It's a bone tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> you said you mentioned your salon. Do you um do you work in a salon? Suite? Yeah. So I deal? during the pandemic I had a lot of I live in Dallas, mm. and um during the pandemic there was a lot of people asking me, hey, I see your tutorials. You're in Dallas. Do you have a salon? Are you accepting new clients? And some people were like, I live in in LA, but I really want to come to to Dallas to get my hair done by you. So one day I said, why well, don't I maybe, because I wasn't traveling. Mm-hmm. So I said, maybe I can actually get a studio or like a suite or something like that. So I have a couple of friends that they own a studio and I asked them and said, yeah, man, you can do it. 
So I put on my social media looking for, you know, like a, a suite in this area. And there was a couple of people who reached out and, you know, I went to this space and I took a, one of the spaces. It's like I can put three stations on my, oh, nice. on my suite. So it's kind of big, nice. but I don't have the shampoo bowl inside. There's like half of the salon. Shout out to Abstract Studio for supporting my career. I love you guys. Where to go, um, Abstract? Yeah, Abstract in Frisco, Texas. So yeah, the owner said, oh, "I would love to have you here, you know, with us in the team." And I don't. It's something about what she said, and I was like, "This is it. I like the energy." And I yeah, I have my studio there, so it's only me. What I like is I only work on Friday, so I close the door. And then I can travel. I have a couple of lights there, but I don't have to move things around. Right. Um, so, yeah, that's my my little studio. I only do clients on Fridays, and the rest I'm traveling for for work. Right. So what? So you 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 fly out on Saturday or something? Are you are Saturdays you, or Sundays? Yeah. Are you are you traveling like Wednesdays and Thursdays? No. <coughs> Normally. So, and then, yeah. But so, and I have like, I like to have. If I'm traveling, for example, Sunday through Wednesday, then I have Thursday off mm. to relax. Then I do client Friday and then Saturday off. And that's I love cars. So that's the day for auto shows and stuff like that. Really? So I can enjoy Saturdays in Texas, especially now spring and summer. There's a lot of car shows and stuff like that. And then on Sunday, I go back on the road. So I have a good balance of I don't want to kill myself like working two and three days in between my trips because then I'm miserable. And I, my, my main income is coming from education. So doing client for me is important because if I'm going to be in front of an audience and I'm going to be talking about, this is how you cut hair behind the chair, but I don't cut hair behind the chair. Right. I'm only an educator. You, you no, let me, cause I know a lot of um, uh, educators, they're only doing education full time and they do a great job as an educator. I'm saying that my conversations today as a, me, this is me. My conversations today as a hairdresser that works with clients, when I'm in classes teaching, it's a different conversation. I feel more connected with hairdressers in general because I have the same challenge that everyone has. Right. Right. So I like it that way. I like to have, you know, both. That's good. That's really and good. keep me grounded, right? It's like I have a challenge with this hair. Oh, I'm not that good. Like I think it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me find out with this client what I'm gonna do. Right? Direction, maybe a cowlick. There's something, right? So you just, I like it. That's good. So, um, what kind of car shows do you go to? Well, there, there's this many, right? But um, I like to watch some classic cars. Mm. You know, of course, goes with your music. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then in that day, if it's a classic cars, then I play my, you know, like blues and stuff like that on my way to the car mm, show yes and then others uh, exotic cars or a little bit of everything right mm -hmm. so there's a big one in, in in dallas the second saturday first saturday of the month and they have a little bit of everything so one exotic car in one side then the classic in the other ones then racing cars in the other one do you ever see richard rawlings on him no that he's right in dallas man i know but i haven't seen him huh interesting well he's worried about like selling cars not showing cars probably you know yeah that's good you know it's interesting like when i was when i was younger like i was all about the exotic cars and as i've gotten older the cars that that that, that, that i enjoy seeing are um the other uh, classics if you have one million dollars now mm -hmm. what car you will buy that is classic this is my podcast this, <laughs> no 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 you buy it is your podcast you know whatever um one million dollars classic. Well, it doesn't have to be a million dollars. I say dollars. that. No, no. But it you have, have to money. Be, right. It doesn't have to be. Here's where, I, here's where I, I live. I love the old, like, I got it, like a 56 Corvette, but it has to be like a retro mod. Like, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not interested in the old, like, gearboxes. I'm not interested in the old, like, um, um, uh, motors and stuff. Like, I want, like, ABS. <laughs> you know what I mean? So take, like, a 56 body and put it on, like, a retro mod uh, uh, um, a car nice that's it man nice. but like it would be like it would look as like it would be like that red and white thing you know the red and white um look on there and then um but it would definitely be a restaurant mod like i'm I not i'm it. not interested in like those old cars as cool as they were drove for shit and yeah. by the way i just looked this up actually is that like the, the legendary car is like the 66 um uh, mustang uh cobra you know i look 
that thing was only pushing like 200 horsepower. And now for like 10,000 bucks, you can buy a car that's pushing 500 horsepower. So yeah. it's amazing that this is this car that like, it was this legendary like speed demon. You're like, one, it's about 5,000 pounds. And two, it was pushing like, I think it was like 280, 280 horsepower. And like everything out there now is blowing that away. So yeah, I would like yeah. to have like today's technology on that old, on, on that old. Um, it makes sense. Yeah. It makes yeah but sense. Did you see that Nicolas Cage movie where he, that was the main car, the Shelby, the GT500, 67 GT500. Yeah, so. Eleanor. <coughs> Eleanor. Yeah. But, it, but it's a Rustro mod. Okay, well, all I yeah. know is my answer is that's my that's my car right there. Ever yeah. since I saw that movie, what was that movie by the way? Eleanor. Um, Gone in gone 60, 60 seconds. seconds. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was Eleanor. like, I was like, yes, that's the car I want. That's so <laughs> cool. So yeah. I bought the 2015 Mustang because 1965, 2015, so 15 Those are the years. fastbacks, oh, right? Nice. Didn't yes. they make those a fastbacks? Yeah. Yeah, so it kind of looks like the... It, it very, like... Yeah, has the that same, look, the yeah. same feeling, and even have like on the bar, on the, the t on the front, it's, it's like fifty years, so oh, cool. I like it, and yeah, that's that's the car that I I drive. So you kind of have a retro mod in a weird way. Kind of, yeah. yeah. So it looks retro, but then you have five hundred, six hundred horsepower. Nice. Yeah, I don't barely use it, but it's it's in my garage. <laughs> you know, whenever I go there. But my dream car. Yeah, 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 yeah. I won nineteen uh, eighties or nineties. Porsche. Which one? 911, 993. Mm. I like, I like the shape with the wing on mm -hmm. the back. Yeah, I'm I like you. the white body. Dude, those Porsche GTs are sickening. Yeah, I know. But I, yeah, then I look into the new ones and it's like, oh my gosh, Yuch, the speed, right? Yeah. The look and the speed. Mm -hmm. So but maybe you just take w the engine out of yeah. one and stick yeah. it in the body. Because a GT3 is like very expensive. Uh, very. Yeah. Yeah. They, this they, is on my bucket list. They are sexy though. Let me see if I can get a, a new contract after this <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Yo, I, I work hard. Maybe, really hard. maybe Mustang will be your sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to drive it to all the shows. Yeah. He, he want, I think he wants Porsche as a sponsor. Oh, yeah, Porsche. Kind of Sorry, yes. Porsche. Porsche. <laughs> yeah, Porsche could be it. But, um, when did you come to the U.S.? Nin oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, 2012. 2012. Full-time. Full-time. Yeah, because I was working for company right mm -hmm. back in the days and yeah they have a big opportunity but i needed to move because flying from puerto rico it was every time i was going to brazil south america it was like going to atlanta or miami and then go south it was too much of a travel so then i said hey what if i move to the states but i need to you know get better on my english so i started practicing you know getting a couple of my friends that are here in the states um you know robbing Robbie and Domenico, we used to work together, and I was just, you know, making phone calls, trying to have a conversation with them, practicing more and more and more until one day I decided to move to Miami and then started working more and more in the States, like doing classes. It was hard. I remember uh, this experience, like, you know, I was in a class and my accent was really, really, really strong back then, and my English wasn't that good. Um, so there was a lot of people on the, not a lot of people, just a few, kind of upset with me when I was teaching. I don't know, maybe it's like, well, you know, who is this guy? You know, I don't have anything to to learn. Mm -hmm. So I say, hey, um, I have a lot to show, right? I, I speak with my hands. So if you stay, if you bear with me, um, you're gonna learn something today, I promise you, right? So there's a few people to stay in the class and, and, and I finished the class and yeah, the, I, they're still in my Instagram, like, you know, sometimes like commenting and, and supporting. Nice. Now it's different. But that was like my first couple of classes. I think it was um, either North Carolina or Atlanta or Georgia, one of those. It was like the first places that I was visiting, Florida and those two. And then I started like getting to know more salespeople inside of the company. And they were like just bringing me to different cities. And that opened up like so many opportunities for me. Um, so I still do Latin America a little bit, mm -hmm. which I just, you know, came back from Argentina. I was there for, for two weeks. Um, like five days ago. And then, yeah, I'm teaching more in the United States now. That's so I teach more in English now than, than in Spanish. When um, you ended up in Dallas, was that because of Tony and Guy? Yes, because then the headquarters were there and there was a big opportunity there. So I did two years in Miami and then they moved me to, to Dallas. And yeah, A-Rod did, A did the same though, didn't he? Didn't he go Miami, Dallas, and then LA and now he's in Chicago? A-Rod. Well, but he's a military. That's right. Right, so he was in Texas, you know, uh, for I think it was El Paso, maybe. 
I think it was yeah, El I think Paso. You're right. yeah, 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 yeah. And then, yeah. yeah, he started traveling like that. What brands are you working with now? So right now I'm working with Babyliss, mm -hmm. part of the Babyliss Pro team. I heard the meeting yesterday was uh, was uh, how to say Babyliss. <laughs> <laughs> Babyliss, babyliss, like, Baby. yeah, so many. I went, you know when Sophie does her interviews, I want her just to ask people how do you, how, how do you, how do you pronounce that? That is a good video. Like you go, is babyliss or babyliss? That's or read this <laughs> to see how many people are gonna read it, right? Just do that. That's what we're doing after this. We're gonna babyliss. Are you gonna do that? Babyliss, babyliss, babyliss. Yeah. You definitely Which tag them. one? Yeah. Dad. Yeah. Ask Sophie too. Yeah. Okay. Like ask all the artists and then ask people that are around. That's a good video, Robbie. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, one. do it. <laughs> Include me. Okay, I will do. <laughs> so he'll say it with an accent. Yeah. <laughs> which is yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> it's good. It's good. So then I I also work for IGK. So I'm the director of education for IGK and professional content. I've been with them since last year in February. So after working with Tony and Guy in TG. Uh, I did 20 years with the company, mm -hmm. right? And I, like I said, from the bottom all the way to, you know, like to be working with Anthony Mascolo on stage and traveling the world with them. And I did classes in every single academy they have, like Italy, London, collections, like Taiwan. I was, I, I had a great time there. Um, and now I'm with IGK, you know, like running the education, traveling almost every week, supporting, you know, sales, um, in education, in salon education, which I love. You know, I know that some people, they, they want to stop working or doing classes in s small spaces with salons, and they only do shows. Uh, there's something about the connection that I have with, you know, s in salons. I have such a great experience. I take the salon owner, hey, let's go to a coffee shop after. So I like to do that a lot. It doesn't matter how big your career can be. Um, it's uh, it's nice to to be surrounded by humble people in the salon and you know that you're helping them yeah so then i'm part of that journey with them so i'm doing that and also um i'm doing i started with hanso hanso education so we only done uh one weekend together in washington it was a great experience so i'm in looking DC? forward for yeah yeah, that's oh, we miss out on that. Well, that's the so that he was at Ash. Ash oh, that's right. When you were at Ash, yeah. I didn't realize that was a Hanzo. Um, um yeah. was class. trying to the event, trying yeah. to find my rhythm, right? Because I know that 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 there's not a, a specific format of doing classes, so everybody have like their own twist, which I like. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm structured, right? So I was like, how I can be myself, but at the same time, you know, help the brand and and also be disciplined, right? So I think that I have a challenge for my next weekend to do to do better, right? Um, but it, it's fun, it's fun. You know, I like it. That's really cool. So I have like, yeah, three con contracts right there. <laughs> nice. How do Enjoy. you like, go ahead. No. Uh, how do you like, when you come to a show like like this one, you know, and like you have so many contracts, how do you like, how do you divide the time up? Or what's the demand just as, just as an artist with a bunch of um, yeah, contracts? So I'm here with Babyliss and also IGK, right? And I just asked for, you know, can you send me the, the, the schedule? So then I can book with both, like right after. So I who do you ask for the schedule? Well, both, both. So, so what if there's something that's conflicting? I just, you know, talk about it. I say, hey, listen, can we push this one and this one? Like I, tr I was trying to push this and this. I know you have to be, you already have a schedule for 10 a.m. in the morning. So then I went and checked my IGK and said, no, let's push for a little later. So this conversation, because I know that when they ask me for something, hey, for example, one day he's like, Joel, you're going to be doing BTC show, but we have Presley Poe that wants to, you know, we need to switch shows. And I say, no problem. Let's do it. She's my friend. I love her. So, yeah, let's do it. Just m m put me in another show and Presley can do, you know, the BTC show. So when they need me, I'm there. Mm -hmm. So... When I ask, I just expect them to, to, to understand. So just having conversation, like so far, no problem. Mm. But it's one day, it's gonna be like a problem to be with two brands, it's like, okay, the, who pay me or the most? Or three brands. <laughs> <laughs> who <laughs> pay me the most, <laughs> right? And I have to choose, like, hey, I'm sorry. <laughs> but so far, it's good. So do you, and if it's too personal, we, we can definitely not, not talk about it, but do you get paid like per show or, or is it like an annual contract with, with some expectations? So this is the thing. And this is for some of the folks right there that are looking for contracts. This information is for you. Yeah, so uh, sometimes brands, they want to 
um, pay as an appearance, right? Right. But then what if they use you only two shows a year? Right. It's not that then you're missing an opportunity to make more money with other brands because you're locked in with that company, right? So for me, it's like, okay, let's talk, you know? Um, I, I want a fixed salary and I want this kind of, kind of money for the year. And if you don't use me for a show, then I make tutorials and they're, they're good. So I can do that for you. But this is what I'm looking for, you know? I think that that year, the times that I was like, so afraid of negotiating that that's gone you know there's something happened in my um 20 years with the previous brand and i couldn't do anything else and i was seeing like all my friends like killing it like having different contracts and having a voice and all of that it's like well i want something like that mm -hmm. right i want to take advantage of not just my education side of the business also my social media and content creation because i do my own videos like i do everything on my own so i said okay uh, and i i probably have a lot of money invested on my on my equipment like i shoot sure. with a canon eos r5 and i have oh you're R. not shooting a sony <laughs> no <laughs> porsche no. guy I, <laughs> I i use sony for a little bit but then um the flippy screen was a no-no for me because i shoot by myself right so eos r came up with the flippy screen that i can see myself and i can put a vertical and it's super crisp and I don't have to do any post-production on editing. Mm -hmm. It's so clear. So I started shooting with them and then after having like all the lenses, I'm like, let me go to the R5. But um, I also have Sony in my house. So I shoot with both. But right now my tutorial is kind of, and I was like, I, I invested in my, in my equipment. So now I can sit and say, no, I can create content for you. And that content is gonna be, if you hired another person, you have to hire an agency a videographer, post-production, you're going to pay a lot of money on that. You know who's so I'll do it myself, and then you pay me. <laughs> you know who's killing that game? Oh. Travis Parker. Yeah. Because he's getting paid by L'Oreal as an artist and L'Oreal as a production yeah. and L'Oreal. We have a lot of conversations, me and him, um, about that, about gear and all that stuff. Yeah. I've always been into gears a very long time. I think when, when the industry I think it's the car guy in you. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah. The, the, the industry wasn't ready. Like my first couple of like content that I was creating with the camera, people were not ready. People were not ready for that. And every time I posted something with my phone, it was just, you know, crazy. So until one day I said, I pushed myself and said, you know what? I'm just going to, I'm going to do my content with a professional camera, with the best light. And I'm going to create a culture for that. Right. And yeah, I did it, especially during the pandemic. Then my Instagram started like, you know, growing, growing, growing for that. So now I'm, you know, like Travis Parker, the same thing, you know, creating, you know, content and, and the highest quality. I don't care for likes. I just go with the highest quality. Mm. I like that. So what if you, if you were talking to somebody who was uh, kind of coming up and uh, would you say that they should feel as confident uh, in negotiating with uh, brands or do you think that there's a little like paying in and maybe taking what you can get uh, in the beginning or what would you say to somebody who's yeah, it's a combination when you start you have to start humble you have to you know be lucky to get a, a nice company but also some like a company they have a good mentors and you can learn from them mm -hmm. so it's more about the experience and the money that's and great. then at some point a good balance of both and then s after that maybe you can sit more comfortable and say i know my worth i know the work that i put into you know my career so this is why i think i deserve you know um, i'm glad you brought that up because um the, the piece of advice that i've given a few times is that experience has much more value than money when you're young and that experience is going to pay you in the long run Short money isn't going to pay you when when you're in the latter latter part of your career. What's going to pay you is the experience that got you there. So if you're if you're bypassing experience for money, you'll lose in the end. Yeah, you have to be in some situation that very painful situations that make you, you know, value yourself. Yeah, right. Also, you know, maybe you have a contract that you don't like it because that was the only uh, opportunity that you have at that time. But that's great. But then through the difficult situation, see other people making it and, and doing this and doing that. It makes, it, it gives you fuel, right? Not everybody understand that, but if you understand that, that those situations make you stronger, then the only way for me to get a voice was 
um, just creating content. You know, yeah. like, I want people to see what I'm capable of. Y and that's what got me into Babylist. Only one video that I did with a curling iron, super simple, nice music. I don't know, like 30 second video. It got me the contract for Babylist. Just that, just that. Was it a Babylist curling iron? Yeah, of course, of course it of was. Course. Joe. That's my so people ask me, that, yeah, it's so my 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 favorite tool because it got me a contract right now. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Amen, man. Thanks, baby Liz. <laughs> I love you guys. You know, you're you're interesting. You're an interesting like subject almost. I'm going to put you there is because you were coming through the old hierarchy of like you had to work your way through a brand to get any recognition. You had to like there was this this very specific ladder that you had to climb to to get any kind of um, recognition. And then all of a sudden, social media came in and blew and blew kind of that hierarchy aside. And yeah. now like now like there's a different hierarchy about about how you get a, a attention. I was like very so into the career right you know like you know, i have to get get better on this and on this on this and then then social media came and then you know you're walking on the floor and you know people stop you and say something i still feel weird oh yeah about that um and i tried to change the subject right right away hey where are you from hey oh well, yes <laughs> i've been there yeah i love the city i tried to change the subject i don't want you know people oh my gosh Hey, so um, this is a, 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 an ask for anyone that's listening, is if you see Joel on the floor, make sure that you attack him and tell him how much he means to you, just to make him feel uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I'm going gonna, gonna to be blush. <laughs> the, entire, the entire floor. But this is, it's also like how, how people raise you, right? So, yeah, my mom, she don't, she's not like that. We were having a conversation this morning, uh, yesterday, she wanted to buy an oven. She likes to um, do cakes. And that's mm. basically how she raised me, like doing cakes, right? So he got a job, and then afternoon, like selling cakes to the friends and to the church and, you know, paying for my, my tuition and all that, like my, my, my private school. Uh, it was a Catholic school, and she was, like, cleaning the, 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 the church and all that. So she was asking me to buy an oven, right, a stove. And I said, just get whatever you want. <laughs> I'll send you the money. Now I can, right? So, of course, right. I'll pay you back. Uh, right. So, she was sending me pictures this morning of the guys bringing the stove to the house. Uh, well, tomorrow she better send you pictures of the cake of the guys. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly, awesome. right? Exactly. <laughs> so, it's like how, how people raise you that keep you, you know, grounded and humble. Yeah. What, what's your mom's favorite cake that you eat? Vanilla. Like a, like a, like a sponge yeah. cake or like a regular cake? A regular cake. Yeah. That is so good. Like when they mix, I just you know, put <laughs> my finger like <laughs> not my finger, like a spoon. And then take it's a definitely his up. finger. Yeah. He definitely stepped back from that. I, oh, it's like lick the balls or kids. Yeah. <laughs> when you're kids. Cakes now. <laughs> I, I still do. <laughs> yeah. It, when whenever my wife's making cake, she still gives me the mixture thing. Yeah, yes. well, and the I still get, the best. The mixture the best. I still get my tongue yeah. stuck in yeah. it too. Yeah. <laughs> like, and then, every and then time. the topping. The topping was like they used to use like a like a syringe, big one, mm -hmm. right? Some people does it like with a plastic bag and they yeah, squeeze. Yeah, 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 but yeah. The, my mom used a, a different one, a professional one. So it's more like a syringe, like a big one, right? And then like I from used Pulp to Fiction? help. Uh, I don't remember that part. But <laughs> so think about this is like that, right? So I was taking. Robbie, like give a, me your arm. Yeah, <laughs> like taking like a knife and then like inside like the frosty oh, inside yeah. the topping i was doing that 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 and then i was just passing to her especially in, on special occasions like you know christmas and um some valentines so i was just helping da, da, da. so then she can do you know the, the frosting part like super fast i still can write like names on, on cakes oh, on nice. those you know when i was kid nice yeah that's pretty cool yeah that's cool that's really cool does she does she make a flan yeah, she can do like everything. My she wife did. is Cuban, and she does like this amazing flan with a little bit of like a like a lime zest in it. And if you haven't messed with a flan and lime zest, it's oh. a, it's a game changer. There's one dessert that is uh, it's almost like a I want to say like a pot, and then she put a plant on top, but it's like a chocolate mousse. So it looks mm. like a little plant, oh, right? And cool. she was testing that, and she was like, "I know this is eggs." and have this and this and this and she started you know working on it and then she got it oh wow 
And it was oh, like, so she wow. went to like a restaurant and did it, and then she made it. No, well, she tried it in a place mm -hmm. in a restaurant. It's like I think I can make it. You have eggs, and she she guessed like all the different ingredients and the mousse, and she did it. And then she put like Oreo, like scratch Oreo oh, uh, yeah. cookies, and then put it on top. And then she put like a artificial one on top. Oh, nice. Oh, my God. It was so good. That's so, so good. So good. No, I need dessert now. I know, right? Hello, we need dessert. <laughs> uh, we, were at, uh, we were at a restaurant in New York um, a couple weeks ago, and they had chocolate chip cookies without chocolate chips. But instead of chocolate chips, they had crushed Oreos. So it was like a crushed oh, Oreo yeah. chocolate chip cookie. <gasps> Game changer. Yeah. Game changer. So good. <laughs> By the way, we are in Orlando, so there's a place that I love here, like cookies. Oh. Uh, Gideon's in Disney Springs. Can't wait to go there. And Gideon. So Gideon's Good is the one. Okay. Yeah, they're amazing. They're thick and really nice, crispy and soft inside. I love cookies. Okay. My cookies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I heading cookies. to Tampa after this, and I'm uh, I'm I'm gonna go have a a, a Cuban meal over there. Go we have get this. Cuban. We have this like uh this really uh, cool um like hole in the wall, right? Like if you're gonna eat Cuban food, like don't go fancy. Right. No, no, you have Go, to be yeah, uh, yeah. like a cafeteria or something exactly. like that. Exactly. Yeah. Like <laughs> at one of the restaurants, like you literally, um, you literally walk through the kitchen to get to the bathroom. You know, like you see all the like all the uh, abuelitas back there, you know, yeah. cooking and stuff. You know, and you're like, hey, <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm just using the bathroom. It's cool though, man. Cool. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Shout out to uh, those holes in the walls, man. And I've got Cuban on the mind. Yeah, you I mean, know. I think we're going to we're going to be in Miami in a few days, like this weekend. And there's this little place that's been there since I lived in Miami Beach uh, in 2003, and uh, it's still there. It's like a mom and pop shop. It's like you walk in there, you feel like the whole family is working there. It's awesome. Those are the places, yeah. right? Yeah, it's called Puerto Sagua uh, down in Miami Beach. Say that again. Puerto Sagua. Okay, Puerto Aguas. Yeah, it's, nice. It's amazing. Yeah. So, Joel, what's that translate to? Now that your English is great. Puerto means port, mm -hmm. and agua is water. Oh, oh. Sagua. Uh, sagua. 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 Then I don't know Sagua. S-A-G-U-A. <laughs> no. All together? Because puertos is like puerto. Yeah, two um, words. Puerto, sagua. S -A sagua. S-A-G-U-A. If they're divided like that, then yeah. I don't know what is yeah. sagua. Okay. No. So well, That's a place to go, though. In, right there? If you're down in Miami Beach. Like down, down there. I think it's like ninth or seventh or something in Collins. That's the place. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the place to go. I love, go to, yeah. I love I'm starving, going to Miami. Miami, Miami have like yeah. so many, so many different places, like the different cultures. So I love Peruvian food. Yes. For me, oh. in South America, is the best food that you can go, and then Argentina second. So Peruvian like ceviche. It's so rich and so nice in Miami. So there's many, many places that you can go in Miami for food. Nice. Yeah, I'm looking forward to Like Cubans, Puerto Ricans, uh, Venezuelans, and then you have Brazilians, and then Asian food is amazing there as well. So you have a little bit of everything. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of those cities that they have, uh, you know, a lot of cultures. Right. And, yeah. Well, we're in D.C., so, we, you know, we get all that, too. And we, yes, we have that, uh, D.C. is who's incredible. That, who's that Spanish chef? That's in D.C. Uh, Jose Andres. Jose, Jose Andres. Andres. Yeah, he has a bunch of restaurants there. He's though. everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. Literally, he's everywhere. Yeah. He's, everywhere. Yeah. he's here as well. In Disney Springs, I think. In Disney Springs? Yeah. Well, he, he's literally, wherever, like, shit's breaking off, he's there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? He's in Puerto Rico as well. Yeah. Was he down there for, like, the hurricane? Well, he was yeah. in Haiti for the uh, for the hurricanes, for the, right? Yeah. And then Puerto Rico as well. Yeah, he wow. was helping. Yeah. He's that's such awesome. a saint, that dude, man. Yeah. 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 You know? Making millions in one side and the other one helping people. That's nice. Giving it, yeah, yeah right? He, uh, one of my clients, he's, yeah, it, that's her neighbor. So, uh, she, she said, he, wa she says he walks... I might be talking out of school. Hold on. We'll do it. So uh, she wa he walks in his backyard on the phone, and then, you know, of course, being loud in Latin or loud in Spanish, you know, he's running in the backyard, and she can hear the yeah. whole conversation. It's all in Spanish. But all in Spanish. <laughs> all in Spanish, but she can you hear can, him. You, like can, you can guess, like, a few words. Cerveza, <laughs> paella. <laughs> That's <Spanish>. right. <laughs> right. Paella. Exactly. Oh, he's making paella. <laughs> I know the new recipe. <laughs> <laughs> Call your mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's it's, awesome. it's been a, a fun podcast. I love it. Yeah, it's not, yeah. We, Normally we, I'm shy and I'm quiet and I'm like, but I'm I've been different. You've been different. Unless, yeah, well, we got to talk about cars. We got to talk about yeah, food. Right. We got to talk the about that yeah, I like all this love stuff, it. right? Yeah, exactly. It's what love fires it. us up. Joe, how can people find you? So on social media, on Instagram, I have Joel Torres Style. 
and and by the way, Joel is spelled Joel. Joel. Yeah. Joel. Why are you guys? Why are you guys in the states says Joel? Joel, uh -huh. but you say Noel. Oh, Ooh. good question. If you're going to start asking English questions, none of them make sense. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> None I, of the rules make sense. But I'm glad that in the NBA, there is a Joel Embiid. There you go. And he's the same way as me. Right? So now, I don't know. I Joel, J-O-E-L, Joel Torres Style on Instagram and TikTok. And then on YouTube, I have Joel Torres PR as Puerto Rico. Of course. PR. All right. So those three are my main. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to start working on, on some videos for um, for YouTube. I'm going to change the format of my tutorials. I'm taking a break right now because mm -hmm. I was like, I don't know, I was feeling like I was creating, 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 and not having that much fun. So I'm taking a break. I haven't posted anything other than my story in a little bit, but I'm coming stronger, right? Um, so can't wait to put more more stuff out there. I can't wait either because when I was having the conversation with Gordon Miller yesterday, he said that um, Joel is always six months ahead of the trend. So watch mm. what Joel's doing today and in six months that'll be the trend. So he And it's not that I have like a magic ball. Like I watch the future, <laughs> what is going It's just for me, I'm not even thinking what are we missing in the industry. It's more like how I'm feeling. You know, I feel like well, you, your feelings are six months in the future. <laughs> <laughs> so but during the pandemic, I was sharing, and, and if you see my videos, by the way, I like to say this, you know, I want to say I was the first one making videos that it was stationary with a mannequin and you're just showing your hands because it was a need on me. And I was using music because I was, I don't know, my English, you know, you listen to Jacob Kahn doing voiceovers and all that. And I was like, oh my God, this dude is amazing. So I feel, I feel weird if I record my voice. Plus, it's a, a whole production. And I have the production. I have the mics and I have a recorder that I can do everything on the, and then clap just to put everything together. But it's a lot of work, right? And I don't have the time. So my videos were simple from the beginning, uh, like 10 years ago. It's like music instead of voiceover and then my hands cutting hair, right? And I was like doing a lot of techniques and people were learning those techniques. Now they're doing it on their videos. Thank me later. <laughs> uh, they don't even know what they're doing, but they following what I was doing. And there's a lot of videos that they're basically like very similar to my videos. But I was the only the, the first one. And it's there, documented. So go to my Instagram a couple of years ago and you see that I was doing that type of video with the mannequin. And it's always like stationary because it was the mannequin. So I was moving the cameras one camera moving to get oh, different angles. really? Different angles. Oh, because wow. for me, it's how I would like to see videos. Right? Right. It's like, oh my gosh, it would be nice if I change. I'm going to put the camera on the bottom and then have the hair coming down. Or I'm going to put the camera on the top. And I was just trying to find a way to do it. This is before pandemic. A camera on top so people can see my sectioning from the top. Right? Um, I was... I was, when, when, you, when you want something really, really hard, it's um, like I was dreaming with the idea of being in one of those Tony and Guys collections because mm -hmm. that's what got me into the discipline of cutting, the romanticism of my friend cutting. So I said like, oh, the collections, one day I'm going to be in those collections, but I have to practice. So I was just practicing and, and, and recording everything and then making those weird angles with my camera until I was getting like the opportunity. That's and then awesome. I got the opportunity. They called me, hey, we're going to London. We're going to do the first collection. I was like, oh, crap. It's, <laughs> it's happening, right? So I did a couple of collections. And for me, it was like, yes. You know, I learned that. I, it's like um, when you, I, I'm forgetting the word, manifest something. Yeah. So that's why I was doing those videos. It was more like you're visualizing me doing those videos. And then once I did the videos, the collection, then it's like, oh, how I can take it to the next level. Ah, I'm going to start using backdrops with color based on tasty tasty was one camera on top and then doing something easy like a recipe so that was my biggest inspiration i'm going to keep it simple for the hand industry and i know that there's big things that are going to come so i started investing investing in, in lights and stuff like that and then i found a different way of making videos and then i progress into now i have the little space in the salon so i want to show a little bit of the salon and i'm going to show a little bit of my face but everything was Mostly like my hands. 
You know, it's interesting that you said that because our, our talk about like not wanting to speak on, on camera or not speaking on camera, but like I watch a rod and like what he does and what his thing is, is he'll do one in English and then his next post is in Spanish. He'll do one in English and, and the next one in Spanish. Have you ever thought about like doubling down on your Spanish? Yes. I have a couple of ideas, you know, like I, it's very different. Like I have a person in Argentina that she got a tattoo, my face. No. What? It's crazy. Yeah. That was crazy. Um, the amount Wait, hold on. Was this your best friend or were you a little scared? And was it a good picture? Did you <laughs> like it? Was it a good picture of you? It looks great. Yeah. I think I'm super thankful. You know what I told her? I'm going to show you the picture. You know what I told her? It's like when I'm in, in Buenos Aires, you know, like we can take, you know, time and, and grab a coffee. You know, I want to meet you. Yeah. So she, on a bus for two hours, met me. Whoa. We took wow. a picture. And then uh, we spent like 30 minutes, me and another friend and her. And then she, another two hours, go back to, because she couldn't make it to the show. She, she didn't have the money to pay for uh -huh. for the class. But the class was four hours from there. So I was so like, I can give you the ticket. You can be the assistant. You can be backstage. I just wanted to be thankful for You can sweep, for just something. be there. <laughs> but she couldn't make it. So I said, I found time on, on that city because we're stopping in that city in between the shows. So anyway, that's, you know, like something big. What I'm saying is that the amount of appreciation for education there, it's so incredible. People are so thankful for opportunities like that. And they stay the class. And there was one day that we finished about like midnight. We started wow. cutting each other. We ordered beer and pizza and people were staying. They wanted to spend more time with you. Here, you're not even finishing the haircut and people is like, I have I an appointment. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, I get it. it's Monday, but it's only Mon one Monday. Like, <sighs> yeah, it's different. You know, people here, they don't know like how accessible is education in the United States, but those places, they don't have the same education or they have education, but they don't have those international artists coming with new trends, mm -hmm. new ideas. And they take advantage of that. It's, uh, it's incredible. So well, it's a little video. That's incredible. Wow. Oh, my amazing. gosh. Come on. So people really appreciate, you know, when they have situations like that. And I love going to South America because keep me humble like that. Just I'll seeing them, like, watching, uh, 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 oh, my gosh, I've been watching your videos for so long. And now I, no, I see I have you. Now you're class. here. Right? So I like to go there. So, yes, definitely I want to, you know, do a little more in, in Spanish. You should definitely double down and on I'm, that. My, when I compare my Spanish versus English, like I have, I don't sound repetitive. It's just so many words for one meaning. And you don't have that in English. Ah, uh, Right? So I can, yeah, every sentence is like fire. And I love in it. In Spanish. In Spanish, yeah. Mm. And every, awesome. every country have a different word. So then you learn what they say. For banks or fringe, that's the only two words that you guys use. Yep. It's actually banks. French is more like the, the, the British. They don't use bang because it's something else, right? So they use French. Uh, that happened to me in England. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, um, I, was, I was at Graham Webb, and we, were, uh, we did an exchange thing, so we are cutting hair in, in Graham Webb, at Graham Webb. I mean, in England. And, um, and I was cutting this woman's hair. And I, <laughs> and I go, so tell me how you like your bangs. And she turned bright red. <laughs> and I turned, because at that point I realized what I said, like the words halfway out of my mouth and I'm trying to like push it back, you know. And, what uh, you say? Sweaty and. <laughs> no, 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 no. The no. French, greasy and French. <laughs> <laughs> no. talking about the French. <laughs> So the instructor was like, he ran over and like made some like Americans are stupid joke, you know, <laughs> and then here's the best part. So you know how you, you know, you're, you're when you're doing a fringe, you're like basically like straddling someone to cut the yeah. fringe. So I'm straddling her and she pulls me close and she goes, I prefer to be on top. Get away. <laughs> oh my God. Intense, right? Sweaty and greasy. Oh. So what are the words in yeah, Spanish? what are they? So, okay, so four, <laughs> I'm going to start because it's a few. For bangs, is in my country is pollina, pollina, fleco, flequilla, cerquillo, chasquilla, pava, gallusa. That's seven words already. And is that different in each country? In or each country is different. So, like, if you were to go to like, so, but do you have to find the word? There's like one neutral one, uh -huh. which is fleco. Which is bangs. Fleco. Fleco. And people understand. Is that close to flaco? 
Yeah. Flaco skinny, right? Yeah. So Fleco with the E. So Fleco. So that's the one that is more like universal. So I go with uh, something universal, but then I ask for what is the word here? I already know the country. So then I use that word. So it's like it keep you, keeps uh, all the conversation interesting because the countries that you're visiting, even though it's a Spanish, they use different words. And some of the, um, I know like some of like the curse words are like, are like more extreme in some, yeah. in, in some uh, countries and less extreme in other countries. Yeah. You know, we, right, but that's kind of American too. Like, there's yeah. some words that the British. I think we talked about this the other day. Yeah. There's some words that the British use that we would never use in America. You know, but they yeah. just, it just comes off so easily. You yeah, know? and then you know you have the double meaning. So people, like for example, if I'm gonna take this, you can grab or you can take. Mm -hmm. But then what I say, coger, which is grab. Mm -hmm. uh, if I say that word in Mexico, means sex. Oh, mm. so it's almost like I'm gonna take you. I'm gonna. Yeah. yeah. That sounds a little rapey <laughs> to me, Joel. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's just like, you know, taking something, right? Yeah. So it's like, oh, we're going to have sex or something like that. So you have to be careful what they were. And, and then in Spain, but in, in my country, it's, you're going to grab something, right. right? And vice versa, right? So it's just, just weird. You have to be careful, whatever, you know. You just got to know. You got to yeah. know the difference. It's between the same thing with bangs, bangs and, and French. French. The same thing. Yeah. The same yeah. Thing. Exactly. Joe, I'll thank you so much, man. Thank you for making time for us. That, that, that hour flew by just yeah. like that, man. Yep. It was just, uh, it was really no, good. Thank you for having me. Like, absolutely, I appreciate, man. I appreciate the opportunity and I absolutely and and had you a know, great time. Uh, 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 Tony, who's not here, you know, he was like, we got to get Joel on. So he's going to be so mad that he's not here to meet you, but I'm sure w we can make it happen. Yep. You know, and do That's another awesome. one. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. We're, we're in, we'll talk about cars and cake. Or maybe that's the title of the podcast, yeah, Cars maybe. and Cake. Yeah. <laughs> cars and Cakes. <laughs> Joel Torres, Cars and Cake. That's <laughs> awesome. Once again, thank you very much. Uh, have an awesome day, and uh, we will definitely see you on the show circuit. So, Mr. Robbie Lawrence and Mr. Joel Torres, thank you very, very much for joining us on Your Day Off. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, share it with friends, give us a rating, and drop a review. To listen to all the latest podcasts, please subscribe from your favorite podcast outlet. And to stay connected on and off the show, you can follow us at Hairdistry on Instagram and all other social media platforms. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Peace and love.